behind for the days of old before your media player did everything but clean your house? Morgan has a solution for you that's already built into Windows XP. Before we get into that, you know, yeah. they had to make special arrangements for Perillo to be allowed on the roller coaster. Because, you right. know, you got to be... Uh... Well, he fluffed his hair up a little bit, I'm assuming, yeah. and that finally made Put it a little bit more mousse in there. Yes. I'm sorry, I interrupted. That's right. That, uh, that was fun. Um, so this is the Windows Media Player. I personally don't like the Media Player that is included with Windows XP. Mm -hmm. Not because it's a particularly buggy or faulty or bad piece of software, but because it's huge. It flashes you with websites. If you click on any of these links, you're going to get a million pop-up ads. It's not cool. And I also have third-party software that's going to do all my burning and ripping and all that stuff for me. I'm with you. Yeah. I agree with you fully on this issue. It's the way too much there. All I wanted to do is play my music, play my videos. Exactly. So we're going to go ahead and close this. And Microsoft has seen fit. This is the Media Player 8. Mm -hmm. Microsoft has seen fit to include their Legacy Player, which is 6.4. And they did this for troubleshooting the regular media player. But we're going to use it to actually start our, um, use our media files. All right. So you just go to run, and you type in mplayer2. mplayer2 in yes. the run. Start run. And then you just hit enter. And you there got it is. this thing right here. The classic don't, don't media player. It? By the way, I tried this out. I'm running Windows 98. It uh -huh. also works in Windows 98. It so does. if you have upgraded to uh, Windows Media Player 8, and you, you want to go back sometimes to the spare version, you can do it in Win 98 too. Same way. Yes, and it's very easy to get you to view options, just like you normally would, and you can associate formats. Sometimes, however, it doesn't work. It's a little bit sneaky. You can associate formats with this, and oh, it's, not gonna, right. yes. it's not going to let you take them. So what you got to do is you got to right-click on your media file, choose Open With, mm -hmm. and then do it that way, and then associate them that way. For some reason, I found that that way sticks more. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's, yeah. that would be tricky if someone can't try to do this, and that, that would confuse a lot of people. But... If you're confused, or even if you're not, you can read all about this at yes. screensavers.com, where Morgan's got great instructions on the whole process. And please email her, morgan at techtv.com, with all your favorite Windows tips. She wants to know what you want to know. Coming up next, we'll talk with an internet radio DJ, find out how he got started, and how you, too, can be a DJ when the screensavers continues. But first, here's Megan with a helpful web tip. <laughs> Welcome back to the Screensavers. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Martin Sarge. Thanks so much for joining us. Coming up in this half hour, we're going to show you how to join two networks using a wireless access point. Guy has a friend across the street. He wants to share his internet with us. We know how to do it. We can share We've got it. the answer. We and Brett Larson comes back to show you a cheaper solution to the Mac Apple Studio display. You just it's might really be amazed. Nice. Uh, everybody's looking at it going, Ooh. Because us PC guys, we all want the cinema display. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. You should want a Mac. Check in uh, time now with the fine folks, despite Brett Larson going over to the dark side. The fine folks at Tech Live have a great show. Let's find out what's coming up tonight. News anchor Michaela Pereira is here. Hi, Michaela. Hello, fellas. Happy Easter to you. Happy Thank Easter. You. I see you're, you're wearing your Easter egg uh, frock. This is, it's not quite a frock. Oh, what a oh, great a good show. show. Great show. Oh, great show. man. Thank you, Michaela Pereira. Speaking <laughs> of good shows. Yes. If you watch any other show besides the screensavers during the month of April, you're bonkers. Because it's Tech TV's 2002 Technology Festival. Yeah. And look no further than the screensavers as uh, we kick off next week, a full week devoted to better living through technology. On Monday, we've got Apple Computer's co-founder Steve Wozniak, the Woz, and we're going to build the ultimate home entertainment PC. And then on Tuesday, I'm going to sit down with one of my favorite living Americans, the great Dom DeLuise. <laughs> Plus, we'll Is take a look at one link. Or no, that's Dodie. <laughs> uh, alternative Office Suite. You don't have to use Microsoft. Then on Wednesday, we have the brilliant, funny guy, Bill Nye, the science guy. And we'll introduce you to the world's quietest shh PC. Pat soups up and geeks out a lazy boy recliner on Thursday's show while I talk with former Superman and current host of Ripley's Believe It or Not, Dean Kane, and then grab the Kleenex. Here For Friday, it's a very special show. It's a real today. geek wedding live Celebrate on this very show. I'm personally geek. terrified about this. Geek. They're from what's Seattle, your, what's your role and they will be married by Leo. Yeah, I'm the I'm the preacher. What's your role? I don't know. You I, I think I'm going to take the guy out for the bachelor party Flower the night boy. before. Of I think that I would do a very good what job What was I of thinking? That. You're the guy who jumps out of the cake. So as you can see, there's a whole lot going on in April. You won't want to miss a day of the screensavers in the month of April. It's, it's going to be the fun. cruelest month. It is, according to uh, T.S. Eliot. Mm -hmm. He may be wrong, however. It's been a we're going to prove that wrong. Here, yeah. Yesterday on our poll, we asked you if you find the web fun. New York Times says it's not fun anymore. You disagree. 77% say, Yahoo! 
23 percent sick. I've had it with the weather. You bored with it? That's I'm so bored. That's what I do. You know, it's an occupational hazard. All right, today's topic, News.com reports that PC prices, whoop, they're rising. As component prices go up, companies such as Apple and NEC are raising their prices on their newer models. And then Dell Computer, they haven't changed the ticket price on existing PCs, but they have made an effort to release faster, more expensive PCs to replace the cheaper models. And they're the bellwether. Yeah. What they do, people follow. So today we're asking what you think. Have PC bottoms hit bottom? Yes or no? Is this the time to buy a computer? Are the prices going to continue to rise? Or should we have all bought one two weeks ago, really? And, and maybe having the prices go up isn't such a bad thing. I mean, maybe, the, you know, it will help the industry. That's over, right. Which has been struggling along. That's right. So uh, what do you think? Yay or nay? Go to thescreensavers.com and cast your vote. All right. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show, the Twisted List. But Brett Larson is going to do it instead of me. Really? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, an excellent list. I know, Marty. I've got I've got big shoes to fill, and apparently big clothes too. Uh, so for my list tonight, I decided to show you and the rest of the Screensavers audience five things you can do on a PC that you actually can't do on a Mac. You're kidding. Because as the Mac guy here, I get a lot of this all the time. People always emailing me saying, "Oh, you can't do that on the Mac. Why would you want one of those overpriced, pretty computers?" And I say, you know, they're right. There are a lot of things you can't do on the Mac. So let's start You're off. You're a trader. With, I can't believe it. Let's, let's start get off right with, into with it. With number one. We, we you, usually go the other way, but we'll do it your way. Number I, one. We'll do it with number one. <laughs> Use hundreds of high-end applications, like this CAD program, to accomplish tasks like designing smart bombs, sports cars, and animated characters that will appear in full-length movies. You can also use a CAD program to design futuristic space robots. That will soon take over the world in a miniseries you can write on your Mac. See you, there. Can't, you can't do any of those things on a PC? I mean, on a Mac? No. You can't yet. design smart bombs? You can't do that. You can't, you, no, you can't. You wouldn't want to because Macs are inherently... peaceful computers. All right, number two. Number two, download and use thousands of time-consuming shareware and freeware applications like this one. It's a personal favorite of mine. It's Minesweeper, and you can play it for hours at a time. That's not that... a bad thing. No, it's you know, not. I, I, it's a big time I, I waster. I sense the, the irony coming through here, the sarcasm of hey Brett now. Larson. Hey, now. You don't waste a lot of time on the Mac. Number Let's go three. on to number three. Right click, right click, right click. That's right. Quickly access those feature-packed contextual menus found all around Windows by simply pressing the right mouse button. Or as left-handed people, I think they would refer to it as the left mouse That's button. That's right. You can't do that on a Mac, can you? Mac users only know that a single click without the right or left orientation of a Windows click. I think you need two buttons. Number four. Number four, the internationally known blue screen of death. Like alien hieroglyphics in the Midwestern wheat field, these things <laughs> appear at random, unexplained times. And like those hieroglyphics, few can actually read the cryptic messages they contain. Pretty neat, huh? Macs never crash. No, they, they actually crash? never do. Never. They never do. And finally, number five. Mine ran for two weeks straight. Number five, surf the web and check your mail. Knowing that love letters from friends and promises of your favorite stars in the buff can only mean one thing, <laughs> a virus. Yes, friends, that's right. With a grasp on only 5% of the computer market, the only virus a Mac user knows are those discussed on such popular shows as the screensavers. Open anything you want on your Mac and laugh yourself silly with glee, knowing that the promise of getting free internet service, firing your boss and working from home, or reading someone else's Word document, that's one of my favorites, forwarded to you by a complete stranger will result in nothing more then a few minutes of entertainment for you and hours of painful data recovery for your PC-loving friends. You are so bitter. That's another thing you that happens so to you bitter. when you're a Mac user. You know, the key, I think, here is 5%. I only get 5%, Marty. 5%. You get hey, more uh, than that on your book. That's right. To get the inside <laughs> scoop on this list, go to the screensavers.com. Thank you, Brett. Thanks, it was Marty. an admirable first try. Thanks. Thanks. Megan, anything new on the Screensavers website? <laughs> Back to you, Marty. Thank you. Larson's nuts, isn't he? Coming up after the break, want to attach your LAN and your friend's network across the street? It's possible, and it's cheap, too. We're going to show you how when the screen series continues. Welcome back to the Screen Savers. Uh, Tim from La Crescenta, California said, my friend and I have networks in our homes and live across the street. Live across the street. Can we link them together using a wireless network? And he actually specifically mentioned Linksys, so we're going to do it with Linksys. But this will work with pretty much any one of these. Huh? Yeah, they're fun, aren't they? Yeah, they are fun. Okay, stop playing with my antenna. These have a range of, uh, I think it's 1,600 feet. No. Which is like eight miles. No, you lie. They're about 150 feet. What are you talking about? I. What you talking no, about, think, Willis? Really? I'm right. You're right. All right, you may I be believe. right. Maybe this is a different one. What though. kind of what kind of dis what kind of distance we can expect 
probably across the street we can do. 150 feet is nominally what you can do. You can get bigger antennas and go farther, uh, but you need boosters. What these are are both hubs and routers. So they allow you to connect uh, your cable modem or your DSL modem into the back here, and then it broadcasts the internet access out of this wireless thing. Now, he wants to have his network in his house hooked up to this, go across the street, and then his buddy across the street doesn't have to pay, basically, doesn't have to pay for internet access, can hook up his network to the same thing. They can share files, but he can also share internet access. Can he do it? They, Absolutely. Let's assume that they're not sharing. They're, they're not stealing. This they're is the Linksys they interface. Now, they've changed this a little bit now. This is the WAP 11 we're using. Actually, I wouldn't recommend that for what he wants to do because he probably wants some hardwired ports on it as well, and this does not have additional uh, ports. It is only wireless. What you'll do when you uh, run it, in fact, I'm going to go right to the manual. I'll tell you exactly. It'll say what you can do here. You can do what he wants to do, which is a wireless bridge is what they call it. So here's his LAN, all hardwired. He goes across the street to the other LAN, all hardwired. That's called wireless bridge mode. Now, the disadvantage, as you can probably tell from this image, is it has to be hardwired on both sides of the street. You can't use it as a wireless access point at home. For that, you have to do a slightly different uh, configuration. Let me go to the configuration uh, window here. Uh, as with all Linksys routers, and most routers of this type, you configure it actually through the web browser, which logs into the uh, router. And you'll see there's access point which allows us, uh, for the, for the, that's kind of how you would normally use it. There's access point client, which is the one he wants to use, where you go across the street, and you see you have to enter the MAC address, which is the unique Ethernet address of the other router in here. You know, it's a long number. You have to enter that in there so that it can see who it's talking to. There's also wireless bridge. Whoops, that's not correct. <laughs> Thank you. Of course it's not correct. I just typed something in. And then there's point to multipoint, which allows you to broadcast to your entire neighborhood if you so wanted to do. Linksys says we don't encourage that. They actually, technically, they say, well, we don't support it, but in fact, you can do it. And this is the, this, look at this, look at this diagram. This is the multi-point one where you got all of these, <laughs> all thing, of these yeah. guys all sharing the same internet connection. Now that's what I call cheap. <laughs> all right. USA. So it's, it's all in the manual, guy. Uh, uh, yes, you can do it. Go out and buy a WAP 11. If you're going to, probably what you want to do is get one of the ones that has additional hardwired ports so that you can add uh, hardwired computers to that particular network. Your friend gets the same thing across the street. It doesn't even have to be the same because this uses 802.11b, which is the standard Wi-Fi protocol. It can be any Wi-Fi box across the way. I know. love 802.11b. <laughs> Me too. Go to the screensavers.com for instructions on this uh, cool wireless feature. You're so cute That's when fun. you're angry. Coming up next, are you having a are you a Mac user who wants to run an Apple Ooh, Studio display on expensive. your system, but you don't want to rob they're a bank? Expensive. I can't afford it. Brent Larson, he's back from Tech TV Labs. He's going to join us with a less costly alternative to the beautiful Studio display. Oh, Stick around. See this all. It's this Monday, April Fool's Day edition of the Screensavers as we kick off a great April. Well, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Hey, just a reminder that the film The Panic Room is open in theaters today, so check it out because we will be talking with Jodie Foster, Forrest Whitaker, and Dwight Yoakam next Friday, April 5th on our show. You don't want to miss You interviewed it. them. Yeah, I went you down to L.A. and interviewed them. Yeah, they're really they're good people. And it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. It's very Did Hitchcockian. You? Did you it's like it? It's done in like all, like three rooms, yet I've, it's compelling for the 88 minutes. They movie like crazy. I mean, I've seen trailers, every movie I've gone to, and it does not interest me for some it's reason. It's kind of like Home Alone. It's scary. Home Alone? Yeah, you know. Okay. The intruders. I got it. Gabriel. Poor Gabriel. Look at this. He sent me handwritten three pages of error messages from Norton Wind Doctor. Wind Doctor is a program that comes with the Norton System Utilities, and he's getting a bunch of error messages. It's saying something's wrong. I can't find... Just ignore it, Gabriel. Wind Doctor is picky, picky, picky. Is finding a lot of... Can you believe he handwrote all of these error messages? They're meaningless. They're fine. Sometimes you go to the doctor, you find out more than you really need to know. <laughs> Unnecessary. By the way, next Friday, yes. 10 o'clock Eastern, it's a very special screensaver. It's the first big... Oh, this is... I thought we were going to talk about the wedding. This is something new. We've never announced this. Have we told anybody about this? You're it's getting the, the first time. right now. This Check it. this out. It's the big screen screensaver show. The first of a series of tech TV movies. We're showing movies on tech TV Pat, now. Pat Norton and I are going to host it. Uh, our first movie is Coma. Michael Douglas, the first Michael Crichton movie. It's an all-star cast. We're going to be hosting it 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, right after the screensavers in a little bit. I hope you will watch this coming Friday. Something brand new for uh, for Patrick and uh, me. I got Patrick got and Leo sitting together in a dark room watching that movies. That should be good.
Trubisky. Jake Seeley says, Megan, please answer my question. I've sent it several times in the general mailbox with no luck yet. Hey, again. Hey, again. What kind of TV and TV cards do you use to get that nice picture of computer screens on the television? We don't use anything consumers can buy. We use, well, you can, but it's expensive. Scantrons, they're, uh, they're around $1,000. Uh, Skidoos, what do we use most of the time, Miriam? We use Scantrons? I think that's what we use on most of our equipment. Uh, they're professional equipment that, tri that tricks the computer signal into looking like a TV signal. You probably wouldn't want to buy that for home use. That's going to do it for this edition of the Screensavers. I'm Martin Sarge. Hey, I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us all week long. We thank our guests, David Lawrence, Steve Wolf, Brett Larson, Chris Perillo. Have a great weekend, a great night. Come back April. It's going to be great. Have a good Friday. Bye. A good, good Friday.